Hey, we just watched the first four episodes of Kaze ga Suyoku Fuiteiru, or Run with the Wind. A... Literally the most cliche title for a running anime imaginable. <laughs> uh, this is a show about ten dudes being, like, blackmailed, I guess, into running. Running on the college track and field team. Um, th this show is a very, like, weird premise for a sports show. Because, yeah, it's about a college team where... This guy who, I guess, wants to have a 10-man team to go run the, uh, to go run this, like, really famous marathon that's extremely difficult. Um, he wants his 10-man team to do it, and it's clear that he's, like, in his fourth year of college, so he's going to be graduating soon, and he has some kind of prior injury that has prevented him from getting to do this before, I guess. So, uh, he basically tricks nine other guys into staying at this very cheap dorm that offers breakfast and dinner for free um, without telling any of them until all ten are gathered. Yeah. And you know, there's characters who were staying in the dorm from before, like the past year. Like yeah. There's like an older student who was just staying at the dorm, and that was not the case. You do not have to be like... Well, participating on the team to have that discount. Yeah, the trick is that secretly this dorm is for the track team, apparently. Yeah. And nobody knew that, but... Uh, and the landlord is the coach, and, and nobody said anything. And it yeah. even says, like, track and field team on the plaque in front of the building. But, you know, it's it's really small print, and it's really old, well, and nobody would yeah, pay... Like, sure. everyone... <laughs> The thing is that nobody's contractually obligated. It's not like they moved in and they signed something and now they're stuck on the team. Um, you know, it's not like a fine print trap. It's just that he no, basically... No, I thought it was that they, they would have to participate on the team to be able to continue staying there. That is that is the case, but, like, it's, it's very strange because he doesn't tell that to everybody. He only hits the otaku guy with that. He only says to him, like, oh, you're going to have to move out if you join, don't join the team because this dorm is just for people on the team. But, like, none of them yeah. knew that when they moved in. So he just springs it on everybody after he's got ten that, hey, you all have to fucking run. Um, and apparently he's, like, chosen everybody who's in the dorm for a certain reason. Like, a lot of them yeah. are former athletes or high school athletes. Except for the otaku, who he just, like, freezes Who just over. is there. Uh, for no particular reason, but, and like... And really shouldn't be there. Yeah. It's pandering to have the otaku character. It's... I have a lot of problems with this odd. character. Uh, <laughs> so the the main character is a guy who was, like, a all-star runner in high school, but he ended up leaving because he just doesn't do... Basically for bad coaching, like... Yeah, his coach was a dick. His coach so kind of like singled him out. Team for them not performing to his level. Right, and the other... Reasonable. It caused problems with him and the other members of his team where obviously they're going to have a problem with him because of the fact yeah. that he's causing them like grief. There's like a former team member who is kind of a dick and antagonizes them. Mm -hmm. So he ends up roped into this, and of course, just like uh, our boy in Surinay, he wants no... He has no desire to come back into the fold, though at least this guy is still... He's still an amazing runner. Mm -hmm. He just doesn't want to do it on a team. Um... And he's pretty self-serious, but he kind of gets... he has a gambling addiction? Yeah. <laughs> really weird. Uh, and in... That's probably the most interesting thing, like, in the whole show, is that the main character has, like, a gambling problem. Um, or at least he... Tr I don't know if he necessarily has a problem so much that he, he just did it once. It's unclear. But, like, he went to the pachinko know. parlor and blew all his money. And doing it once is still, like... He yeah. had to literally move out of his dorm... Right. And was, like, had to resort to stealing from convenience stores because he gambled away all this money. I would yeah. say that's a problem. <laughs> and and uh, our, our, our running club bro finds him in the middle of a theft. So the show opens in kind of an interesting way because it introduces us right away to our main character stealing something and getting scouted for the team as he's doing that. And it goes straight from that into just... Introducing, introducing us everybody. to everybody, every character, all the kooky characters. There's what? a black guy. There is a black. It's it's really funny because there's a, there's a tendency in anime to sort of like in sports shows to throw in a black guy when it's a sport that black people are generally associated with, like basketball or track and field or something. You'll you'll often see like a black guy or a darker skinned character, like just generally darker skinned characters. Um, 
and usually it's portrayed as like, oh, this is a black guy who's good at the sport. But in this case, it's just a black guy who's like, hey, yo, y'all are all racist for thinking I'm good at track and field just because I come bit. from Africa. <laughs> 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 like, people keep saying, like, oh, there must be tons of people who can run like I mean, this for your problem. he's ripped, so... <laughs> yeah, I mean, he is, he can run, but he's not like a... He's not the he's best He's not a professional team, runner. Though. He's not, uh, he's not trained for this. He just happens to be a black guy, and that's... It, it's kind of implied yeah. that that is why he scouted him, is just because he's from Africa, which is pretty fucking funny. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, so you, we, we start off just being introduced to these ten characters and their basic traits and they're just kind of hanging out and then it's sprung on all of them that, oh, you're all gonna have to do track and they're all like, what the fuck? And we as audience members are like, how is this gonna fly? Like, how are you going to make this a thing when none of these guys wants to do it at all? They're all like, fuck no, we're not running. And so now it's mission convince everybody to do my crazy running plan um and then also uh, we're meant to believe that they are going to be able to compete that's where the show kind of loses me to compete in the marathon yeah because that's like the goal is they have 10 months to have everybody at be at the level where they can run yeah. like 20 kilometers at well, they're, it's like it's like the most intense yeah. race, like the highest level race, and the 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 one dude, our main character, is constantly telling them like, "Look, this is impossible. Like, this is something that only the elite teams even qualify for. Everyone on our team has like before we can even run in the qualifying race, we have to have on record that you can run this certain distance in a certain amount of time and all 10 of us have to be able to do that and even if a couple of us are like close or could be trained up to that level by this point that does not mean that we would place in the qualifiers to make it to the final race and moreover some of us are totally out of shape and you've got yeah. the otaku guy who literally is who like is like 35 is minutes to run five kilometers <laughs> like he is not healthy at all no. and should probably go see a doctor if we're I know guys who are like, who can these... who can run even less than he can, who would not have made it five kilometers. I don't know, man. I think if one of my one of you're my that otaku, out of shape, you probably one of my old otaku <laughs> buddies. Help. We tried to walk to um like the Taco Bell that was next to my house. It's like like half, not even half a mile away, and he had to like take a rest. Yeah, on but the at way a certain there, point, it's like know? okay, there has to be some people on this this campus who enjoy running. Like right. we need to get rid of this guy because there's no. There's Possibly. no way we're training him there's up. There's no realistic... There's no reason why this guy should even be there. Like, right. they, he goes through and says, like, I picked each person for a specific reason. Like, this person is a former soccer player or something. Like, surely you can get somebody who is at least healthy yeah, to, uh, to replace him. Maybe he just couldn't find enough sports people who weren't already on teams. Um, but, I mean, they're already in other clubs, too. Like, yeah, he's in the no, manga club. I think it's so. just because they wanted to have the otaku character, and they were just going to... That's no. the thing. It's it feels very ridiculous because like as you go through, in episode two, at first it's it's like a weird feeling because on the one hand, the the idea of the plot is fun and weird and interesting. It's just also broken. It's like I want to watch the show because it's so unique because it's a bunch of college students who feel fairly realistic. Like mm -hmm. I think the characters are written in a way that. They're pretty believable, and they, they have, like, at first they all seem like they just have, like, their one personality trait, and some of them haven't really been fleshed out. But a few of them, like, there's the one guy who's the lawyer who's pretty self-serious, oh but he's he goes like, clubbing he's and so shit. He's so realistic. Yeah, like. he feels very real. Uh, you've got, like, the smoker guy who is pretty cool, who they call Nico-chan, because he's always he's got, got nicotine. He's also, um, like, a super, super senior. Yeah, and, like... <laughs> So, so some of the characters are, are kind of likable, but, like, the main thrust of episode two is, like, the leader of the track team, like, trying to trick all these guys or, like, coerce them into, into participating. Some of them he does it so easily that it's, like, really? They, they bit for that, you know? Like, the one guy, he's like, oh, 
you'll be able to use it for job opportunities. Like you, you can mention it in interviews when you're trying to get jobs, and like that somehow yeah. convinces the guy. Or, when or it, the twins, like, oh, you, girls will like you if you run. Like at least the twins <laughs> are stupid, so yeah. I kind of get it with them. Like I'm not too bothered by them getting strung along. The lawyer was like the weirdest one because he was so against it, yeah. and then he just. Okay, I'm, he's he's into it. He keeps it's, going. the The problem is that we get scenes of the guy telling them reasons that they should do it, and the reasons aren't good, but it works anyways. It's like they all end up doing it, and there it seems like they don't even know why they're doing it. Like they'll be they'll all be grouped up in the morning. They'll be like, "Why are we going along with this?" Like, "Well, I guess we're just doing it," and it's like, uh. I don't buy that. It's a little, it's a little much. And like, again, some of the scenes are fun and I like some of the characters, but like after a couple episodes of watching them just run the same run, uh, every morning, like this is what all that, all that episodes three and four is basically is them repeatedly trying to do this 5k run to like, just, you know, figure out what level everybody is kind of at. And, uh, the more times they do the run, the more it sinks in. Like, oh, everybody's getting more and more into this, even though it is seeming less and less likely that they have any chance. Mm -hmm. You know, like, when you see Otaku Boy taking 35 minutes on his run, and you're like, well, they can't train him up. And, like, main character dude says flat out it would take 10 years of training to catch up with the people who are going to be competing. Because they're people who've been running since middle school. Yeah. You know? So... How are we as viewers meant to take that? And, like, I don't know. Maybe the story is planning to have a twist or a turn. Maybe it's a misdirect. Maybe it's not going where you think it's going to go. It's just watching it and feeling like we're meant to believe that this is what the actual stated goal is. It just makes it feel really ridiculous. And, like, well, uh, you know, like... When, when you see everybody coming around so easily, it's like, well, what kind of ham-fisted reason are we going to get for why they can compete? You know, like, yeah. I'm scared to find out how they're going to unlock the chakras on Otaku oh Boy and make him fucking co competition worthy in a couple weeks, you know? His speech at the end of episode four was, like, really irksome. It was pretty corny. It was really cringy. Like... He was just on the ground, barely able to move, talking about how he hates normies. Like... I appreciated the scene of the manga kids all at the lunch table, like, discussing manga and talking about how they learned all their values from manga and stuff. Yeah. Um, and there's a great, like, argument between them on the intentions of the author of this manga that literally was my <laughs> Shield Hero video from whenever that went up as compared to this, today or yesterday. Um... So, that was funny, but yeah, like, when, during the dramatic moment where, like, this, this guy who has a problem with the main character from his previous school, like, comes over and he's, like, talking shit about all of them, and then Otaku Boy gives this whole speech about, he's like, oh, I hate you people who judge others by, by grading them, but, like, I really felt like that scene didn't account for all ten personalities present. No. Where I feel like everyone would have had some kind of reaction yeah. or something to say and to this guy. And why would that be the one that, that the rival kid, like, accepted? Because, like, he probably would have just laughed it off. That kid's, right. like, on the ground after yeah, why like, was a basic he run. Yeah, why was he so moved by that statement that he just kind of takes off? I don't it know. Was, it was just, I don't know, I felt like it was like, oh, we have to have the otaku speech. It's like... It, it just feels all the time in this show, like, again... Like, they just do a thing, and then it's kind of like, we just are meant to accept that, oh, well, we've moved past, like, you know, just like with him coercing each member, it's like, well, he gave them a reason, and now they're on the team. It doesn't matter if it makes sense or really follows with their personality. A reason was given, and so here we are. And so it's like, with that scene, it's like, well, someone spoke up. So the bully ran away. Doesn't matter if the, the thing's said and from the person saying it doesn't seem like it should affect that guy and his personality. A thing happened and therefore we continue. And that's, it's just how everything feels in this show. You know, like it doesn't follow with enough logic and it just kind of leaves you feeling like, man, this is conceptually dumb. Um, even if there's good things about it. Uh, production wise, it's pretty, you know, it's... It's got some decent animation. It's production IG. The backgrounds are shit. The, 
They're not always, though. It's just the riverbank scenes they're, that are really bad. They're there for, like, the whole fourth episode. That was... It, it started to get irksome, because, like, in the first episode, when they're just in the dorm, it felt pretty good. Like... It, you know, it wasn't, like, noteworthy backgrounds, but it wasn't bad, and the character art is good, the character animation is good, but the the riverbank location just looks terrible, and yeah. there's so many scenes set there, and I was just like, oh, man, stop stop showing yeah. us this I place. Don't, I don't think the last episode the we watched looked good. Like, there were a lot of scenes where, like, they cut to their faces, and their faces were, like, just, they looked really off. Mm. And, I don't know, I just, I don't think it was going to stay consistently as good looking as it had in the first two episodes. Right. Um, I, I mean, like, when it comes to production IG, I trust them to put the animation in when it matters. You know, yeah. like, when there's going to be races, there's going to be animation. But, uh, but yeah, just having to look at that riverbank so much was disturbing. The music is really good. I'll give it that. Like, uh, I, there was a few, a few head nodders on the soundtrack here. I was excited to hear. Mm -hmm. Um... But yeah, just overall, it was like, it's the kind of show that it's not so much that I was drawn in by caring about it, I was drawn in more by how weird and different it is. Yeah. By like, huh, a sports show taking a very different and circuitous route towards forming a sports team, but then, you know, that different route, it, it's like it sounds good on paper, but in practice it just comes off kind of dumb. Um, and the more of it I see, the less I am inclined to, like, I was hoping by this point I would care more, and I do care about the main guy, I think he's well done, I think he's got a good past, uh, I like the way they portray his, like, trauma, and the fact that he's still a great runner, you know, um. Yeah, there was one scene where he had, like, a weird PTSD moment while he was yeah. running, and I was just like, what the fuck? <laughs> I, I enjoyed that scene. It was it was definitely interesting to look at, but it was like, why is this happening? Yeah, it was pretty out of nowhere. Um, yeah, I would say I could easily see... Like, I could see watching this whole show and not having such a big problem with it that I thought it was awful. Yeah. But, like, it's just the kind of thing where it's like, uh, I don't feel like spending 24, 26 episodes on this no. as opposed to watching something else, you know? Um, so, yeah, that's where we're at. And we'll do another. <laughs> uh, all right, we watched like seven minutes of Hina Maruzumo. You said you wanted to do a finish or fail on it. So what is what did you have to say about oh, it? Oh, the show reminded me a lot of Shield 21 in how, like, boyish it is. It's so shonen. <laughs> it was like, like right off the bat, the main characters, you know, like big, dopey, awkward, like super strong. Like his personality is, he's very strong and he's very determined he's to be really successful. Buff. At, he looks like a bear. Yeah, he he's, he's like got like a short, bulky like, body. Yeah, <laughs> um, and he With scars all. He's over like, there. I'm gonna be a number one sumo guy. That's my thing. He had and, like crazy shonen hair. Yeah. He definitely is, like, emblazoned into my memory. He, he comes <laughs> to this uh, high school. He's a he's a middle school student who's about to, you know, go to high school the next, um, you know, soon. So he's scouting this high school that has a sumo club, and he happens to fight some other sumo kid who's just there. And, like, they immediately bond and are now friends because they're both into sumo. And then, like, there's a bunch of gangsters at the school who are invading the gym, so, like, he's gonna have to fight all these gangsters, and it's just like, this is just gonna be a show about a bunch of dudes fighting bunch each other. A bunch of guys fighting. Yeah, a bunch, of, a bunch of dumb boys beating each other up, and, like, it's very awkwardly directed. Like, weirdly, shots have no sense of flow into each other. It, um, it feels very weird. And, you know, the animation's shit. So it's not good. And the character designs are really hideous, like really, really, really ugly. So I'm looking at it and I'm just like, funny. man, <laughs> I have, I'm not going to get anything out of this. So um, is there anything else you wanted to say about it? Because that was it. That's my piece. Yeah. Uh, I'm done. I'm just sorry, Wada. He did not like the Simo anime. I don't know. Did if he, he like it? I don't know. I know he loves Simo though. Oh, does he? Yeah. I don't know if he likes this show though. He's, I don't think he's very into like dumb shonen kind yeah. of stuff. I also don't think he watches these. But, uh, yeah, well, that's, who, who, is it Huno, Hina Marazumo or Huno? I think it was Hina Marazumo. Hina Marazumo. Let's watch some other shit. Karakuri Circus. 
What in the fuck was, was that? It was really fucking weird. It was like a cross between Dead Man Wonderland and Zatch Bell. <laughs> this comes from the same manga author as Ushio and Tora. Um, I, all I could think while watching this was like, why does this exist? Because it's a, an adaptation of what I assume is a 90s manga, and it was produced by Masao Maruyama, the founder of Madhouse, who later went and made MAPPA, and with MAPPA... He collaborated with Studio Voln, which made this show, uh, which is from a different ex-Madhouse producer, <laughs> um, on Ushio and Tora, and they made, like, they they made, like, 36 episodes of that, adapted the whole thing. So I assume that they're just like, hey, let's go do the, uh, the guy's other manga and adapt that whole thing. And, like, I remember last time I saw Masao Mariyama at Otakon, he was talking about his desire to adapt more Neketsu manga or hot-blooded manga from the 90s. Um, and Voln apparently stands for Visit Old, Learn New. So I guess it's a studio that exists to adapt old shonen properties. Just very weird choices, yeah. I feel like, because this show is bizarre. They did an idol show. Yeah, and they also made I, I Want to Eat Your Pancreas, which uh, uh, I don't even know if that's... It's not a 90s manga. No, I don't, I don't know what the source material... Uh, it's a novel. I mean, maybe it's an older novel. I don't know. I have no idea. But, uh, yeah, so this show, it's just got so much stuff! It's like, it starts off and it's like, oh, when I was a kid I loved the circus, but there's actually a circus where they kill people, and we see the circus where everybody gets <laughs> fucking murdered. And then it's like, a guy in a bear suit who needs Will people- Will have, like, seizures if they don't laugh. Yeah, if, if people don't, if he can't make people laugh- And he's not good at making people laugh. No. So how has he, how has he survived? How long has he had this curse or condition or disease, whatever it is, like, he- so he's trying to make people laugh, and he finds this kid, and the kid is, like, being kidnapped by these weird puppet people, and he, just out of a desire to help this kid who he sees on the street, ends up in this, like, protracted, insane battle with these puppets where a train goes off the fucking rails oh into God. a building. It's madness. And, and it, so the train just happens to go into this circus, which apparently Bear Guy had been hired to work for recently. Um, but at this circus is this girl who, I guess, uh, like, is indebted to the kid's grandfather and is meant to be, like, his, his, like, caretaker now that, that, that his dad's dead, and she can control, like, a, a cool badass scythe puppet or something. Yeah. So there's, like, doll people, but then also puppets as, like, two distinct categories of things going on, um... But yeah, she like wears these rings or whatever that lets her control the the puppet thing. And I mean, I guess the long and short of it is it's an action series. It's a shonen action series with lots of hot-blooded screaming and um an odd situation where the main like kid is basically he doesn't seem useful at all. Like he's just a kid for so that it can be a shonen manga, but yeah. like the real characters are these two older protector figures and Part of me is, like, kind of curious about whatever relationship they could form or something, but, like, the series doesn't really feel like it is couched in logic. It's just couched in whatever's in badass. Yeah. Like, it's very rule of cool. How many episodes is this supposed to be? Like, 36. 30? Oh, Jesus. I, I definitely think I know some people who will love this show. Yeah. Who, like, because I'm confident this show will deliver on cool shit. Like, at the very least, it will deliver on you know, badass speeches and cool fights. And, like, even if the animation's not that incredible, and I, I hate the color design of everything. Like, just the way things look, it's just... It's gross. Yeah, it's just not attractive the at all. The main girl's outfit is really gross. It's like, it, which is a shame, because she's cool looking. She's cool, but, like, why the fuck? Yeah, she's in, like, a like a, like a clown a onesie. Clown like leotard. a spandex. I feel like Jesse would love this show. Maybe. I think he's the kind of person I'm thinking of who would be, like, totally down <laughs> for everything. Because, like, the again, the logic of the show is just cool things happening as fast as possible. Just ideas after ideas. Just like, oh, and, and this guy fucking dies if he can't laugh. And, and, and this thing and that thing. And, and, like, it's just hitting you on all sides with all this stuff. It was cool when the train 
crashed off the right. track, and you could like actually see this see the aftermath of people needing to be rushed off to the to the hospital. And when you think of that as like episode one has yeah. a train going off the rails, it's like okay, this is setting this the tone. Is a lot. Like this show is gonna be crazy. The show is a train wreck. Um and. Like, the silver-haired girl, she just kind of enters the plot, and then she's just, like, in. Like, she's like, oh, I I, uh, I worked for your grand... Like, you've never met day. me, but I exist solely to serve you. Yeah. And, like, we're, we're hitting the ground running. They're, like, the end of the episode is already, like, about to start the next fight, you know? So it's like, yeah, this is gonna be fights. It's gonna be a lot of fights. It's gonna be crazy powers and puppets and weird shit going on, um, and people with strange conditions um and a lot of clown suits and a lot of a little kid getting the, his shit kicked out yeah. of him because he like <laughs> at one part the kid's like crying and like he's like oh I, I just need someone to save me and the guy just like bitch slaps the shit out of him and then grabs him and is like you're gonna be okay and then like later on he accidentally like uppercuts him into a coma that was funny i definitely think that if you're the type of person who enjoys like off the rails storytelling and you're not really that like you don't really care that much about visuals like you're not you, you know like because for me i love action shows but i like action when it looks great mm -hmm. i'm not so much uh, as into just like conceptual action in so far uh, as much as i am into like just seeing stuff that looks good and is exciting to watch but this show conceptually if you're just like whoa a train went off the rails like that's awesome you'll have fun and I like the way that they they draw, like, poses. Like, I like the way that the girl moves. I like the the animation direction, I suppose, of, of her. But, um, you know, overall, I don't think the show's pretty looking. The show's for juggalos. It gave me a headache. I'll, get, I'll tell you that. It definitely gave me a headache. But I couldn't, like, I couldn't say it was bad. That's why we watched the whole first yeah. episode. It's because, like, the whole time... I was time, really curious to see, like... What, what is happen? this? Like, like, after the first minute, I was already like, I'm not watching this whole show. <laughs> but I need to know what is going on, you know? Just to baseline understand what the show is. And I was left feeling like, yeah, there's... I, I appreciate... I don't necessarily know why this had to be adapted to animation in 2018 slash 19, other than that, these old guys just feel like bringing these 90s mangas back, you know? Like, uh, I don't know what visiting this old is meant to make us learn new. But uh, I do think, that, again, that there's a crowd who will totally appreciate this and just be down for it. So, if it sounds like your bag, go check it out. If not, don't, because it will give you a headache. Anything to add? I saw this show on a lot of people's worst anime of 2018 lists. Yeah? Yeah. It didn't seem like it was badly rated or anything on Mal. I don't know. There's just a lot of people who just, like, were turned off by it. I, I, I don't know I if, can I imagine don't know if a why. lot. I just, like, remember going it on is a, and not seeing, It is a like, total clusterfuck. Many uh, praises. Well, see you in the next one. Alrighty. We watched three episodes of Isekai Isekaya, which is probably... Uh, an indication that isekai has reached a normie status uh because this is isekai your grandma w would appreciate yeah um the concept of this show is that it's an isekaya which is like a basic japanese like just restaurant food stall like a bar type of place uh you know beer and and quick japanese eats but uh the the back door of the restaurant leads to japan Whereas the front door leads to... A parallel universe. A isekai, a very generic... Just Germany. <laughs> yeah, it just seems to be Germany, but like a few hundred years yeah. ago. Um, there's, there's sort of a genre of Japanese media that is overreacting to very basic normal things. Like having people from other cultures experience Japanese culture and just be absolutely fucking mind blown. Um... It's like when they have on YouTube, like, Americans try Korean snacks. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, whoa. What the, is the, this? And they, they, like, explain, you know, like, like the characters will eat it and, like, explain all the nuances of the taste. They're like, oh, my God. It's, it's like, uh, I can't believe I'm eating warm food, you know? Like, it's so incredible. And, like, 
but you know as a viewer that it's just regular ass food so and i don't know if the idea is to imp like make you excited at like how japanese food is so good or if it's meant to be funny like i think of there's a show called therma roma which was about a um a roman guy from roman times who like keeps uh, going into japanese bathhouses do like a time vortex in the bath and that show was hilarious but it was a similar type of concept but it was more comedy driven this one is just like you know, fantasy person turns up at restaurant, has low expectations, expectations are extremely exceeded, and that is the show. Um, but each episode is like 14 minutes long, and the first maybe seven or eight minutes is an anime section, and then there's a live action segment afterwards where they, they swap between either having this cook, like, prepare something similar to the dish in the episode... But a little different. Yeah, like a little bit different, and he teaches you how to do it. Or it's this other guy who's, like, exploring... Going to actual restaurants. Yeah, just, like, doing basically ads for restaurants. Yeah. Um, but the way this show is, like, there's text on screen all the time, even in the, the regular anime segments, which gives you the impression that this is, like, a Japanese, um, like, variety show piece or mm -hmm. something. Like, it feels like... Those weird Japanese morning shows that, uh, that, you know... Yeah, definitely. That are not at all like anime. So, like, it doesn't feel like it's aimed in any way at anime fans. This is just purely a food show for normal Japanese public viewing. Um, it's very repetitive like and cheesy <laughs> as fuck. Like, just... I was... Okay, so... After the first episode, I initially wanted to drop it because I was just annoyed at how condescending it was. That, like, it was trying to insist on just how fucking glorious a bowl of Oden is. When it's, like, you know, it's, like, the most cheap, regular Japanese... Like, the whole point of the show is that it's just a regular izakaya. It's not, like, a super special place. It's just a normal place that happens to be eaten by fantasy world patrons. So it just feels like it's just sucking the dick of Japanese food, like, for no reason. Yeah. Like, that's just what the show is, is, wow, Japanese food is so good. Like, it's worse. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, like, the, the live action segments have this weird thing where, like, the narrator is, like, conversing with the, the person, like, in post, kind of. It's, it's weird, and again, it just felt condescending to me, where it was just like, yeah, this is, this is some normie shit, and, uh. So, but you were like, oh, but uh, I yeah, like cooking and food. I wanted to food. watch more of it because the beer looks really yummy and yeah. I was hungry and I like, well, the, that was I the cook, funny so thing. I was like, oh shit, this is like cool. So you, when you said all that, <laughs> I was like gearing up to like marathon this show and I was like, look, if we're going to watch, <laughs> if we're going to watch this, I need to have beer. Like, yeah. I need to be able to drink along with them and so yeah, because we like, it felt like a show that would be about beer. Right. Which I should have known when, like, they talked about what's on tap. Is, like, that's what they talked about. Like, yeah. it wasn't going to be any more... It's not going to be deeper than Oh, do you think there would be more tap. beers or yeah. something? Yeah, just because the promotional art is the waitress holding beer. Oh, okay. And I was just like, oh, they're going to, like... It's going to be all about beer No, I, I thought it would be a different food each episode. Just, like, character shows up and eat something yeah, new Yeah, but I thought they time. would, like, you know, at least pair the alcohol right. with the food and we have somebody drinking sake there there was a show a little more like that which was the one where it's just about a girl like going around eating yeah uh, it was like five minute episodes yeah i mean there's similar shows that right. are better and then this one yeah this one's like it's even though it's 14 minutes it's weirdly too long it's like each episode like overstays its welcome a little mm -hmm. bit because the food is not that exciting, you know, to spend that much time on it. It's just regular they ass food. I don't really food. show you how they make it. It's just like, right. here's the food. It's, it's just about, chicken. It's just fried chicken. It's mostly about <laughs> reminding us how shitty things were in medieval times and how mind-blowing it would be to eat Japanese food for a medieval person. Um, but, like, it also kind of... Like, there's times where it almost pisses me off because it's like they're slagging off certain, like, foods and cat. Like, there's one part where he drinks the beer and he's like, oh, this is so much better than, like, the mead and, and all that other stuff. And I'm like, hey, mead is better than beer. Like, let's yeah. not... I don't know how good the mead that they have in this, this fantasy world is, but, you know, we're not... Let's not slag off mead just because we got beer. I mean, granted, it was cold beer, so that was part of the, the, the joke. Um... 
but yeah, it's it's just a lot. And but anyway, we went out and got like uh, we were like, oh, let's get some sake and some beer yeah. and like because you were planning <laughs> to make Japanese uh, style. Well, you were making soba. I was gonna make like soba with a uh, beef and, and broth. So we went out and we got a sake, and I got this weird um, Bavarian beer. Cause we went to the we 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 drove first to the local liquor store. And they they only had sake. two sakes. They had yeah. a dark sake and a light sake, and it's like, uh, this is not enough. Like we wanted plum sake. So then we went from there <laughs> to the Asian grocery and got this stuff, and then you made this gorgeous. Um, I mean the noodles. Yeah, I've already eaten all the beef or the the noodles, but we got this soba. Well, you didn't end up having soba. We, we didn't have, have so soba. Many we had so many. I think but, it's because, uh, like, last good. time we it's had really soba instead of soba. Is that true? Yeah. I think, I don't know, I think before we bought the wrong kind of noodles, and I thought we that still had them. That might have happened once. But yeah, so we got all this stuff, like, to gear down for, like, watching more, and then we watched episode two, and you were like, yeah, I've seen enough. Yeah. And I was like, like oh, I'm not even done eating yet! So. They have the same characters. Like, I thought they'd be going to a different world each time, and, like... Oh, you thought it'd be, like, a whole different... I thought that it'd be, isekai. like, a little bit different. I mean, they prefer, like, different kinds of food, but... No. It's, no. it's as simple as it could possibly it's... be. It was, like, the most basic form of the idea that it could take, uh... So yeah, we watched the third episode just to just to finish eating, and now I'm fucking like I'm passing out full. So uh, that's it for this one. Wowie zowie, we finished Zombie Land Saga after having failed it previously. Yeah, after episode four, right? Yeah, and we didn't talk about it on here because uh, I talked about it on the I Am Games live streams back because we were like watching it back when it first started airing, mm -hmm. and because people were. You know, there's a lot of buzz around the show. And the first two episodes were great. We were totally into it. The first episode was fucking hilarious. The whole metal live show at the end yeah. was funny as hell. And, like, initially, I had been excited about it thinking that it would be about, like, a metal idol group. Like, they were going to be zombie metal idols. Because there is, like, a lot of alternative style idol groups. Like, you know, baby metal and shit like that. Mm -hmm. Um... But then in episode two, they switch it up and they're doing a rap performance. But then you get... Oh, yeah, that episode. <laughs> yeah, you get the incredible rap verse that she drops where she's basically just, like, shitting on the whole industry, I guess. We'll get into that in a bit. But um, episodes three and four then sucked balls. And we were totally bored and not into it. And That's we... when they brought in the CG. That was when the they brought in the... CG. Yeah, and, like... I don't want to, like, I'm not somebody who necessarily hates CG in shows, or even in idol dancing, but, like, we started watching Aikatsu Friends recently, which is a, like, kids show that started airing last year that's also about idols. That show had, like, such good character models in its CG that I'm like, oh, I could watch this all day. Mm -hmm. This show, no, not so no. much. I don't know if it's just that the designs don't translate well to CG, or if they just don't have the best CG team, but, like... Probably both. They just look terrible. And not only did it introduce the CG, but it also introduced the, like, self-seriousness. Mm -hmm. And, it, like, the first two episodes had little bits, like, little hints of emotional stuff or drama that already was getting on my nerves. But, like, I just remember it getting worse. And then, like, episode four being, like, just kind of a like, a weird clusterfuck where it, like, didn't even hold my attention at all. So we had dropped it, but then people were like, oh, it picks up after that. Those are the worst episodes. You should definitely check out the rest. So I was like, fuck it. Let's do that. And uh, episode five was hilarious all the way through. That's so great. it sort of gave us the enthusiasm with which to continue, and we ended up finishing the whole goddamn thing. Um, was it worth it in the end? How do you feel? Yeah. I had a lot of fun with it. Um, there were some, like, really good character episodes. Yes, and that was something that was weird that it didn't happen earlier. Like, my expectation with this show, you have a group of seven idols. Um, the first couple episodes, like, most of them seem very one-note, like, just kind of gag characters who don't really do much. And so you kind of 
have the feeling that they're going to take each episode to explore one of these characters, give them some backstory, flesh them out, especially because they all seem to have interesting backstories. They all come from different time periods because mm -hmm. they're, all, they're all zombies. In case you don't know what this show is, it's about a guy digs up seven corpses, um, what he claims to be like the ultimate idols, but really it was like two of them are famous idols. One was a biker gang leader. One was a courtesan. courtesan. Um, one was like a... One is just a high school girl. A one, transsexual TV transgender star Transgender TV child. star. Transsexual is not a PC term. I am sorry. Uh, transgender I just um, trans. TV star and a... She's uh, adorable, by the way. And the... And Taichan, who's just Taichan. She's the ultimate ultimate. Yeah, she's just... She's just Taichan, the ultimate zombie. So, um... So these seven idols are going to have to save the Prefecture of Saga, which is a, a, I guess, declining population part of Japan that uh, the, the guy wants, the, this, this weird guy, who is basically Nate, your yeah. best guy ever, it just is best guy <laughs> ever, and he's resurrected seven uh, idols in order to save Saga. So, like, conceptually, it's fucking hilarious. The, the stuff that they get up to is hilarious because the guy is, like, weird and incompetent and has this, like, grand autistic plan to try to do whatever he's trying to do and nobody understands it. Like, there's clearly a method to his madness, but it is it's... incommunicable. Um, he's a mad scientist. He's definitely a mad scientist uh, with emphasis on mad. Yeah. And he... The show has great, just, like, slapstick comedy, great, hilarious, like, weird moments and stuff. And when it's being funny, it is excellent. It's super fucking funny. And, um, you know, unlike Hinamatsuri, the characters look funny. And sometimes the, the comedy of the show is just looking at them. Like, they'll give them the dopiest facial expressions yeah. and just have them all just, like, sitting around, like, Bleh! like, just looking <laughs> dumb and funny and, um... Probably my favorite character designs of the year. Like, absolutely Definitely love solid. the main cast. I love how they look as zombies even more than how they look as humans. Because they, they wear, like, human makeup when they do their shows. Or but human faces. Yeah, as zombies, they are fucking adorable. They're really cute. Um, the show's done by Studio Mappa, and it's, it gives me... It reminds me of, like, uh, Take You a little bit in the way the girls look. But, um, yeah. They're, they're thick. Some, like the main the girl, thighs. she has thick thighs. Yeah, I, I like appreciate. that. Uh, the there's a good variety between all of them. I like the color palette of everybody. Yeah. Um, I love the way their eyes look when they're zombies and how they're all stitched together and stuff. Um, just really creative designs that that animate really well. Like they're able to do a lot of facial expressions, a lot of cute little different animations. Do you have a favorite zombie? Tai Chan. Yeah. Taichan is my favorite. Who's your favorite? Oh, I love the main girl, and I love the courtesan, and I love, um, I love Tai, too. She's great. <laughs> tai is my favorite because she's just a zombie. Yeah. And that's the joke, is that she and is... never gets old. Everyone else has a personality. She just is a zombie, but, like, and, and initially utterly out of control like she doesn't really dance or sing or do anything she's just a fucking zombie who's just there but like as it goes along and sakura kind of like trains her she she like is able to cooperate and, and she clearly has a heart of gold but like the fact that she's always just like gnawing on people's <laughs> heads and like eating everything in sight um she's every time she's on screen it's an absolute joy Indeed. every single scene with tai is funny um, her voice is fucking hilarious. Shout out to Kotono Mitsui. She did. I'm just like looking at the screen. Yeah. Um, Kotono Mitsui. She has done a lot. Uh, well, <laughs> most importantly, um, she's the voice of Misato from Evangelion. Amazing. So, a hero. So Misato's voice is the voice of Taichan, who just grunts and screams throughout it the makes entire the show. <laughs> That oh, that's excellent. Um, and the main guy is, uh, the guy, rather, is voiced by Mamoru Miyano, who is the same voice as Okabe from Steins Perfect. Gate. Uh, Perfect. But hamming it up to the absolute yeah. extreme, to the point where he's obnoxious sometimes. Um, he goes a little... He does go off the rails. That's the thing, like, the, the early... So the first two episodes, like... 
felt very like sharp and like witty and funny all the way through for the most part except for like the, the sort of weird dramatic moments occasionally that came up but then by episode four i felt like he had been like taken to such an extreme like they'd taken the character like like they were trying to one-up themselves at how obnoxious mm -hmm. and fucking crazy he could be in each opening scene of each episode and it got to a point where it was just annoying yeah um for sure. but then they kind of cut down on the repetitiveness of it where in the subsequent episodes there's not as much of the whole opening scene with him in front of the chalkboard because like every episode would start off with him giving them this like speech in front of the chalkboard and like explaining what the episode was going to be about and those scenes had kept getting longer and longer until a point where they finally sort of shortened them out and also gave us less cg dancing where like there were actually scenes where they were 2d dancing yeah. and it looked way better and it kind of was like damn i wish they would have had the fucking the, you know, the, the staff to do this all the time as opposed to the CG scenes. But yeah, like, episode 5 was fucking hilarious. And then it kind of gets into dramatic stuff again. And basically, I thought that the two girls who were actually idols were by far the least interesting characters. Like, every time it would focus on them, it was usually more dramatic. It was usually about them. Because they take things very seriously, because they were serious idols. And, like, and I they're just... They're always butting heads. Yeah. It's just... They just don't really work as comedic characters no. in a show that I want to be a comedy. Like, because when it gets no, dramatic... it's not it's... funny when you have characters who are completely displaced out of time. And, yeah. like, a little lolly and a biker gang girl and, like, a zombie... And then you have two very serious idol characters. Right. It's like it's it's weird it when the show tries the tone of the show completely. Yeah, it's weird when it tries to be serious because it's so out there. Yeah. Like they're zombies. How are you gonna take this serious? Right. Tai Chan's running around yeah. biting people's faces, and they're like trying to take it seriously. Um, so like the episodes that focused on those two were a lot less interesting to me. And there's like a midsection. Episodes 6 and 7, I think, both were focused on them. And I was starting to lose interest until the ending of episode 7 when they all get hit by lightning and continue performing with auto-tune voices. And they're shooting lasers. And, yeah, they're like shooting laser beams. That's great. Um, and even though I would say that like the uh, mixing on the auto-tune song was really terrible, just conceptually it was so much fun that it, it left me feeling like I can't drop this show because I need to know what other ideas it has up its sleeve. Like, yeah. I need to know how ridiculous it's going to get. Um, unfortunately, I would say that's kind of the height in terms of ridiculousness because the ending, the last episode, kind of just does the same thing. The stage gets destroyed and they keep performing. It's like, oh, well, I guess that's the gimmick is, you know... No matter how many times they get yeah. fucked up, they'll keep getting back up because they're zombies. They kept revealing like little little tidbits of information though that like was kind of exciting. And... Yeah, the later uh, there's still a couple good episodes, and episode eight is fantastic, which is the one where we learn about Lily and uh, oh my God, her I backstory. Cried. <laughs> yeah, so first of all, and I I know that the the community already made a big deal about this, but. Lily might be the most unambiguously trans character I've ever seen in anime. Like, no if ands, or buts. Like, born as a boy, did not feel like a boy, wants to dress as a girl, literally dies of a panic attack from growing a beard hair. Like, no desire to grow up to look like a guy, and is very happy about being dead because she can be eternally 12 years old and never have to age and, and so grow weird. any hair. Um, so yeah, like, I, I, I can think of other characters who are, like, either speculatively trans or who are, like, exploring that, like, in the anime Horo Musko, and I understand that the manga eventually, you know, uh, explores this in, in more depth, but in the anime, it's always, like, a question, it's always, like, the characters are dealing with it and they're not sure yet, this is just, like... Yeah, even it's, in Princess Jellyfish, it's, girl, it's like, it's know. just cross-dressing. Like, right, in that show, there's not actually trans yeah. characters per se, or it's, it's just not explicit no. if it is the case, but, like... Because, you know, it's Japan, and that's, like, yeah. kind of cutting edge for them. <laughs> and, moreover, it's not... It, it's honestly what's, I think, probably the most noteworthy part about it is that it's not even important. No. It's kind of just a detail that gets thrown in, but, like, it has... It really has nothing to do with the backstory. It's just, like... 
Yeah, her family accepted her the way she was. Right. So, like, it didn't... And the zombies all accept her once they find out. They're just like, oh, all right. I, yeah, the you dude, know. like, knew the whole time and, like... Yeah, and he, he's, like, defensive about it. He's like, oh... Yeah, were you trying to say that uh, Lily can't be in your girly group, huh? Like, what's that supposed yeah. to mean? It's just like, wow. What a fucking what a sweet... Hero. What a sweet emotion on the part of the show. But yeah, like, um, Lily's backstory is the first time that one of the emotional scenes actually works. Because, like, her dad is... It's, it's great because the dad is not only such a great guy, but that he fucked up badly. You know? That, like, he had this... He really did... Like, get too absorbed in the fame and... Like, you know, yeah. thing. Like, n- missing out on the fact that the only reason Lily was doing it was because it would be a fun thing they could do together. But then he became more absorbed in, like, the idea of what they were doing and, like, not really spending time with Lily. And then Lily dies and he's, like, you know, haunted by this forever. But then finds... He won't even watch TV. Right, he won't watch <laughs> TV anymore. But then he finds solace in, um, you know, seeing a... What is literally her, but, like, he doesn't know, but, you know, uh, they do a special performance for the dad, and it's super sweet. Yeah, and I cried. Yeah, you (laughs) cried like a baby. I didn't cry like a baby, I cried like an adult woman. Well, and then, uh, (laughs) the next episode after that was the one with Saki's backstory, which was fun. Um, you know, it didn't try to be too dramatic, it was uh, just, it was just a, a good time. Biker girls. Like I'm a fan of biker girls. They yeah. have cool bikes. I like biker girls. Yeah, it's I'm, a, it's I'm a into fun it. Trope. Um, but then from there we kind of just go into the last three episodes, and one is just like a all right fun kind of fun episode where they go into the mountains. That was yeah. all right. But then the last two they try to do this. What came off to me as extremely forced drama, where Sakura... Uh, loses her memories of yeah. being a zombie, but remembers what it's like to be human. Yeah, so she, this whole she time... has an emotional breakdown. Yeah, like, the show opens with her getting hit by a truck and dying, which is hilarious. And uh, she doesn't remember her human life. But then she gets hit by another truck and forgets her zombie life, but remembers her human life. And we learn that her whole life she's been this, like... Like, she's basically cursed. Like, every time she tries to do something, some weird circumstance will cause it to go wrong. So now she just believes that, like, her incredibly bad luck means she just shouldn't try at anything anymore. Because she's gonna ruin it. And, um... It just ends up coming off, like, a bit much. And it's like a weird... It's like, we just suddenly instill this character trait in her at these last couple episodes. And the whole two episodes is just people trying to get her to not, you know, be such a bitch and get it, you know, get in the robot Shinji kind of thing. Like, yeah. Um, it just felt like a waste of time, because it's like we obviously know she's going to we know she's going to participate in the live show. That the manager gives, where he's like it doesn't matter if you're not good, I believe in me. Like, yeah, where he's <laughs> like, great. I don't care if you... I mean, there's there's good moments sprinkled throughout. It's just that it it was very heavy handed and dramatic, and it goes for two whole episodes, and it just felt like an excuse to have drama at the end. Like, how can we create conflict between the characters? Uh, let's do some dumb bullshit that's boring and not funny, you know? Um, sprinkle funny moments throughout. Like learning about her backstory in the specific ways that things went wrong for her is hilarious because yeah. it's never really her fault. It's just like random circumstance. She is cursed. Yeah. Um, but like, so, so yeah, I was I was a little iffy about that. Overall, my feelings on the show were like, it was I was very torn because when it's good, it's great. Like the first two episodes, episode five, episode eight. All of those are fantastic, and, like, I would highly recommend watching them. Some of the best episodes this whole year yeah. from anime. And, like, I would say that episodes 9 and 10 were, you know, were, were fine, were fun, watchable. But, like, 3 and 4, I didn't like at all. 6 and, Six seven, and 7 were or... meh, except for the ending where it gets really, you know, with the the thing hit by lightning. And then the last two episodes were kind of meh. So overall, it's like... I the last episode. I like that you know? there was, like, this weird tension and, like, it felt like everything was going to go wrong because they kept showing, like, the outside of the building and they're like, oh, there's going to be this big storm and the lyrics that they were singing about were, like, really prophetic. 
Yeah. And, like, I don't know, I kept expecting something, like, really bad to happen. <laughs> like, them to, like, drop a nuke on the stage or something. <laughs> I just, like... And I just think they really did a good job, like, building that tension. And then they kept revealing, like, things about a possible next season. It's like, oh, I, like, care about these characters, and, like, I want to know what happens, so. If they made another season, I would be curious enough to watch it, but I would be worried. Because I'd be like, I really want it to be better than this one. Yeah, maybe like, I want it to be more consistent. Um... But, like, the, uh, so the overall message of this show, like, I saw people saying, like, calling it, like, a commentary on the state of, like, the idol industry. I got the impression that it was more a commentary on the state of the anime industry. Especially with the rap episode. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I really had this impression because this, this show is a fucking, like, mobile game adaptation. And these mobile game adaptations... Uh, I'm in love with them, because this is, like, just like with Last Period, it feels like they basically just had carte blanche to do whatever the fuck they want, and so they made it a commentary on the state of anime. Yeah. Um, which that show was even more blatantly about anime. This one, you could apply this to basically anything, and, like, their songs, all of the songs that they sing are about, like, rising up and, like, you know, no matter how how many times you're, you fall down and how bad everything looks, you know, you gotta keep going and keep trying. And, like, the speech that she gives in the rap battle, like, basically is addressing, like, point by point, each different component of, like, uh, you know, everything involved in the industry, where she's calling out, like, the animators, she's calling out, like, for their complacency, she's calling out old people and, like, all the, the other generation for, like, being too stuck in their ways. Yeah, She's calling out the audience for, you know, just just everything. She calls out fucking everybody and it's great. It, if you take it as a commentary on the industry, it's like she's saying everything that should be said. Mm -hmm. She's like really breaking down all the problems and and what needs to be done and there there are other interesting moments like while I didn't care that much for episode 6 and 7, I did like the idea of them talking about the relationship with fans and how um, for the Showa era idol during her time, they were protected by the TV. They're protected yeah. by you know they're they're famous people, people who are out of the ordinary. And they're not really they don't interact with fans. They're no. not down on ground level. And like she's kind of like upset by the lack of privacy and the fact that like they're interacting with people directly. Whereas the newer idol is like, well, you know, in my generation. Um, we you have know, to interact with our fans right. because that's what they're coming to idols for. Yeah, and and idols are just generally smaller now. Where like the there's a part that's interesting where the older idol says like something about how like you're not paying your dues like because the the newer idol had risen to fame within one year, whereas the older idol like had had, had a to longer work her career. Way up the right, top. and she sees it as. When you look at it from the perspective of um, anime production, you think of it that way, I think about how back in back in that era, anime were expected to reach a huge audience because there wasn't a whole ton of them. It wasn't like an oversaturated market where you could find anything just by going online and stuff like that. It was like shows were getting like, you know decent percentages of TV ratings where a show like Space Battleship Yamato is like, you know, a household name in Japan and like, um, or even as late as Dragon Ball, you know, like just anime was being watched by a huge number of people and it was expected that if you were at the level where you were a director or you were like working on these shows, you had to work your way up yeah. to that. You had to be, um, there you know, no way you're going to get there in one year just from right. And now we've got, like, a world where, because of the fact that, you know, the internet has made it so there's so much stuff coming out, no one thing ever gets gigantic unless it connects with people on a more basic level. And, like, anime production has, for the last couple decades, maybe even three decades, like, been mostly focused on appealing to a small niche of fans as strongly as possible. And, like, you have to meet the fans at a closer and closer range in order to engage them and to have events and to have signings and to have the voice actors going around. And, I, you know, the same goes for idols, I'm sure. Like, I, again, I'm not saying that this can't be taken as a metaphor for the idol industry. Of course it can. But, like, 
it's kind of like all the industries have this same yeah. relationship changing and like the ability to spring up and grow super quickly as a creator you know is because of stuff like this in the internet age and i can speak personally as a cult creator i know what it's like to have a, a rapid growth through you know um through close i have a fucking discord where i talk to my fans you know and like that is considered normal that is considered important and like i've seen people have this exact struggle of like you know for me and my friends we've had troubles with like having to put ourselves out there and be so close to our fans because it is like a weird kind of breach of privacy and it's like you have to almost overextend yourself but it's like that's what the market is and there is there's obviously it, it's not an impure way of doing things you know it's just a different yeah. way of doing things and it might be uncomfortable for certain people but you know this this world has its ways and the people who are working within it are just trying to you know they're just trying to succeed the yeah, same way the, the best, other people were the best they can so i thought that was interesting in spite of the fact that that arc was a little over dramatized and not that exciting until the ending um, but yeah, so like, the things I like about this show I like a lot, but the things I don't like about it leave me very bored and uninterested to the point we had initially dropped the show, even though I thought episode two was like episode of the year almost, yeah. you know? Um, certainly the rap scene is one of the most memorable scenes in anime in 2018. Uh, but my overall score would be like a light to decent six, just because like, I felt like half the show I was like this episode's skippable like if I was to watch this show again I would not watch every episode I would selectively yeah. choose the ones I, I like I think and... if we hadn't watched this show seasonally originally we may have been more forgiving that's possible because you know there's always going to be a little bit of inconsistency with the production of shows and like some episodes aren't gonna be as good but like if you're coming to it every single week and you there's like two shitty episodes in a row there's like no indication that this is gonna get better right um i would probably give the show a seven because i think the things that it did were unique and it was really fun and the character art was really incredible and you know there was an episode that literally made me cry so like obviously yeah. the emotional and dramatic scenes like were effective in some some ways yeah. Uh, it was just really fun, and I hadn't seen anything like this. Like, there was girlish number from a couple of years back, and this is just, like, taking that kind of concept in, like, another direction and going even further with it. Right. Even if it wasn't as strong of an overall production, I still really enjoyed it and would recommend it. I, I would compare it, like, most strongly to Last Period, where both are yeah, shows that, like... Yeah, because both are, you know, mobile game adaptations right, they're that both really go out of their way. With great to character art. Mold. That, uh, that, yeah, that have, like, some really incredible episodes and some, like, I don't give a shit at all episodes. Yeah, but, you know, you can, you can give it praise for doing something unique, even if the episode isn't good. Of course. Like, ultimately, I'm, I'm glad to have seen the whole show just to see what other interesting things it did do. Um, even if I do think, like, if you watch episodes one and two, you're gonna get, like, 50% of what is good about this show and like you don't like yeah. maybe even more maybe like 60% and then like if you watch up through like if you if you watch episodes 5 and 8 then like you've seen like 90% of what's good about the show you know like seeing all the rest of it is just like yeah 1 5 you know. and 8 are must sees yeah i would say and so and 2 2 is also a must yeah 1 2 5 8 um i'm trying to think if there was any others I mean, 5 was just, like, really funny. It wasn't even that anything, like, particularly, like, noteworthy happened. It was just really yeah, it was funny. It really great. Um, and, yeah, like, 9 and 10 are worthwhile. But, I don't know. I mean, most people are probably going to be less harsh on this than even we were. Because I think it was fairly, it was fairly popular yeah, and well-liked. So, alright. That's it for this episode of Finish or Fail. Always try to go until we get at least one finish in there. Is my, my way of trying to do it. All I right. didn't agree on this one. I'm surprised. Yeah, by not not by. <laughs> well, we didn't agree on. Uh, I would say that the biggest disagrees were like Sudune, which you would have kept watching possibly. Yeah, if I was bored. And... Uh, Baki, which you didn't even watch. Yeah, I was like, two. I don't even want to watch more of this. Um, like, I know where this is going. Wasn't there another one from this episode that we didn't feel exactly the same about? 
Uh, the, the cooking isekai isekaya? Well, that was, like, only after the first episode. <laughs> I felt like there was another one that... I don't the know. The sumo show? No, we both were just like, who cares? Yeah. Alright, anyway, that's it. See you in the next one.